Booba and the Underground Dwarfs. It's a warm summer evening. Booba and his friends are playing at the park. A huge slide towers in the centre, exciting the friends. Booba is the first to have a go and slide down. Whee! Sliding is lots of fun. Booba giggles and claps his hands with glee. He wants to do that again, but he's already had a turn. His friends want to have a go too. Lula, Mr Beak and Noodle slide down the slide one by one as Booba watches before he slides down a second time. The friends love playing on the slide. Spike sits on a bench watching his friends. He's too busy looking up at the sky to play on the slide. He gazes up at the dark sky lit up brightly with stars. Booba and his friends wonder what Spike is looking at. They all look at the starry sky when suddenly they see a shooting star. Then another one, and another. Suddenly, one of the shooting stars dies into the yellow tube on the side of the slide. The tube flows, exciting Booba and his friends. Wow! How exciting to see that stars like to play on the slide too! The friends wait for the star to pop out of the bottom. They wait, and they wait, and they wait. But the star doesn't appear. Booba and his friends are confused. They wonder if the star is stuck. Booba runs over to the side and peers up the tube. But he can't see any star. The star has disappeared. Booba wants to know where the star has gone. So decides to jump into the tube to see if he can find it. <laughs> Something magical happens to the tube. It suddenly grows and is now much longer than they remember it being. The slide seems to be going on forever and ever until he suddenly flies out of the slide, landing on his bottom. <coughs> Booba looks around him and notices crystals glowing on the ground. They remind Booba of tall glass pencils. Booba looks around again and realises that he is alone. Am I really all alone here? thinks Booba. Suddenly he hears soft whistling. Booba looks up to see his reflection in a large, beautiful gem. He happily waves at himself. The reflection waves back. Booba cheers up excited that he has a new friend. Booba runs up to the crystal and makes funny faces into the mirrored gem. The reflection in the gem doesn't respond. Booba is confused. Why isn't the reflection copying him? Isn't that what they're supposed to do? Suddenly, the reflection growls and makes such a scary face that Booba runs away scared. The reflection giggles. It seems to like being scary. Booba runs through a whole forest of gems before coming to a stop. He is puffing and panting when suddenly something flies past him. Booba immediately turns to see what it is and spots a pebble. It has fallen from the cave ceiling and bounced off a small gem. What a lovely sound! thinks Booba. He flicks the gem with his finger and he hears the same sound again. Booba finds a couple of small stones and plays a whole melody on the gem. He wants to hear more. Booba begins to play with all the gems that he can reach. He is really excited by the sound they make and wants to show his friends, so returns to the mirrored gem. The reflection in the mirrored gem is happy to see Booba again and is delighted when Booba starts making faces again. He wants to play. Booba waits for the reflection to play too, but nothing happens. 
until suddenly he feels a finger poking him in the back. Booba turns around to see one, two, three, four dwarfs standing in front of him. They all walk in a line heading somewhere, wearing helmets, carrying a large lantern, a pickaxe, a shovel and a chest. Booba thinks it's a huge chest. Wow! Booba wants to know what is in the chest and quickly follows them. The reflection waves after him. Booba follows the dwarfs. They come to an underground railway and board a small train made up of four cars. The train takes them on a journey through a long, mysterious tunnel. Booba really wants to go with them, but he's missed the train. Until suddenly, another train arrives. Hurrah! Booba boards the train and rides off following the dwarfs. Suddenly, a fork in the road appears. The dwarfs go to the right, while Booba's train turns left. The rails on the Booba's track spin and twist as if he's on a roller coaster. Yeah! Yeah! Finally, the train stops twisting and turning, and Booba can see the dwarfs in the train ahead of him again. Booba doesn't want to lose sight of them again. When a new fork appears, Booba manages to maneuver the car so that he doesn't lose sight of the dwarfs again. Suddenly, the train with the dwarfs stops and the dwarfs get off the train. Booba's train comes to a stop just behind them and he jumps out too. Hey! Oh ho! Booba has tripped and fallen over! <coughs> He looks up and sees the dwarfs looking over him. They're curious about Booba. Who is this strange creature? One of the dwarfs offers Booba his hand and helps him up. The dwarf immediately hands Booba his pickaxe and invites him to join them. Booba stares at the pickaxe and doesn't know what to do with it. But he decides to go with the dwarfs anyway. He wants to know where they're going. They eventually arrive in another cave and the dwarfs get to work. One dwarf grabs a ladder and another climbs up it and begins to hit the cave wall with the pickaxe as hard as he can. <laughs> a crimson gem immediately pops out of the wall. One of the dwarfs catches it and looks at it curiously with a magnifying glass. Satisfied with what he sees, he places it in the chest. Booba notices that the chest is already full of colourful gems. They shimmer and shine in the light of the lantern. So, that's what a pickaxe is used for. To find treasure, thinks Booba. What a useful tool. Booba walks up to the cave wall and hits it with the pickaxe. <laughs> Nothing happens. Then he hits again, a little higher. Yeah. Still, nothing happens. Booba hits higher and higher. He doesn't give up trying to get his own treasure. Soon, Booba is hanging from the ceiling, holding on to the pickaxe. He looks down at the dwarfs. Uh, can somebody help me down? He giggles. The dwarfs bring a ladder to help Booba down. But soon, all the dwarfs are hanging from the axe. They're all too heavy for the axe. And suddenly, they all fall! <laughs> but look what's happening. There are lots and lots of gems falling from the ceiling. Booba has made a giant hole and found lots of hidden treasure. The dwarfs look at Booba. He is their hero. They have never seen such a talented treasure hunter before. They all run round, picking up the scattered gems, thankful to Booba for his help. As their hero, they honour him by making him an official treasure hunter and gift him with everything he needs to become a great treasure hunter. And... A medal! 
Booba is very excited. But as he's about to leave, his excitement disappears. There's a lot of stuff to carry, and it's very, very heavy. He's not sure he wants to hunt for treasure anymore. Why do I need treasure anyway? He thinks. The dwarves decide to show him why hunt for treasure. They open the chest and take out the gems. They begin to place a gem into every crack they can find in the cave ceiling. They then dim the light in the lantern and ask Booba to look up. Above them, there is a beautiful starry sky. Ah! And yet, it is no match for the real sky. Booba thinks about Spike, Lula, Mr. Beak, and Noodle. He remembers how they all looked up at the stars together, and how they loved them, twinkling in the sky. Booba suddenly misses his friends, but he's having fun with his new friends too, and wants to show them the real sky outside. Together, they all build a long ladder and climb up out of the cave. Booba's friends are still at the park, waiting for him to come back. Booba calls out to them, and they get excited to see Booba and the dwarves. Everyone sits on the park bench, and they all look up at the sky. The dwarves love the sky. It's the most beautiful thing they have ever seen. They love their own sky in the cave, but there's nothing like lying under a real sky. Booba, the superhero. It's a sunny day, and Booba is sat at home. He doesn't want to watch the TV. Running up and down the stairs is boring, and he hasn't got anyone to play hide and seek with. What can he do? Booba finds a book filled with pictures of superheroes. <laughs> One superhero is very strong and can lift up a car. One superhero is so super that he can float, and another superhero can run as fast as lightning. Booba wishes he could be a superhero too. Maybe Genie Booba can help him become a superhero. Booba runs to the bookcase where there is a magical lamp perched on a shelf. Booba takes it down, lifts the lid, and peers inside. But there is no sign of Genie. He turns the lamp upside down and starts to shake it. But nothing happens. Hmm, thinks Booba. Where is Genie? Booba turns the lamp upside down again and taps it on the bottom. <laughs> Suddenly, the air around him starts to twinkle, and moments later, Genie Booba appears in a puff of smoke. Excited, Booba shows Genie his superhero book. He pretends to be a superhero and strikes a superhero pose. Booba looks just like a superhero, and Genie agrees. He nods, clicks his fingers, <laughs> and a superhero costume instantly appears on Booba. This is what Booba has dreamed of. A superhero costume with a red cape on his back. Booba is so excited he jumps for joy. However, he doesn't just want to wear a superhero suit. He wants to be a superhero. He flips through the pages of the book and shows Genie the pictures of the superhero flying. Ha! exclaims Genie. Easy! Genie raises his hand. The bells chime again, and then Genie rises into the air and spins around. Booba is impressed. Genie floats back down to the ground and points at Booba. It's his turn to try it. Booba's eyes light up. He raises his hand to the sky, but 
nothing happens. He waits. And he waits until... The familiar sound of the bells is heard and all of a sudden, Booba shoots into the air. He shoots from side to side, bumping into anything that gets in his way. This carries on for some time, until Booba eventually gets the hang of flying. Booba is excited at his newfound superhero skills and flies around the room enjoying himself before he eventually lands back on the ground. He's excited to have learned how to fly! But Booba wants other superhero skills too. He shows Genie the pictures from the book with the superhero lifting weights. Genie flexes the muscles in his arms. Booba does not notice any changes in him at first, but then the bells chime again. And Genie suddenly and easily lifts the sofa into the air. Wow! Booba is very impressed. Genie waves at Booba. Your turn. Mimicking him, Booba flexes the muscles in his arms. Silver bells chime. Booba runs up to the table and grabs a huge apple. Genie looks at Booba doubly. You don't need any superpowers to lift an apple. So Booba takes a large plate of fruit. But this doesn't impress Genie either. Suddenly, Genie himself is in the air. Booba's special superhero powers have lifted him up into the air. This makes Booba giggle, and Genie seems to like it. Booba's special powers cause Genie to fly like a gymnast. But Genie doesn't like it. Genie isn't a toy, he's a wizard. Booba can see that it is making Genie grumpy, so puts Genie back on the ground. But Genie isn't mad at Booba, he thinks it's funny. Booba opens his superhero book again to show Genie the pictures of his hero running at lightning speed. He runs faster than the wind. Suddenly, the bells chime again and the magic is about to happen. Booba poses just like the superhero runner and he races across the room super quick. He thinks he's a racing car and races around the room without even noticing that his super speedy running has knocked Genie to the floor. But Genie doesn't mind. He's enjoying watching Booba have fun. His job is done and Booba doesn't need Genie anymore. So he clicks his fingers and disappears. Booba is alone and can't wait to use his superpowers. He looks out of the window into the garden at the front of the house. He spies Spike climbing a tree, reaching for an apple. <coughs> but he's struggling to reach it. Booba thinks that maybe he can help him. Booba uses his superhero powers and flies up to the tree and safely puts Spike down onto the lawn. But Spike doesn't like this. He's not happy at all. Spike still wants the apple. He climbs the tree again and this time he manages to reach for the apple. Booba sighs. <sighs> Spike doesn't need a superhero after all. Booba knocks the tree trunk, knocking all the apples to the ground. And a surprise Spike. <coughs> Booba is worried that he's hurt Spike. So he picks him up. Forgetting that hedgehogs can be very spiky. He puts Spike back on the ground and decides to go and find somebody else that he can help. Booba spies Mr. Beak sat alone wearing his headphones. He's flapping his wings frantically. So Booba thinks he needs some help. Booba immediately rushes to help his friend. He grabs Mr. Beak and rescues him from the island and brings him back to the mainland. But Mr. Beak isn't happy at all. He doesn't need a superhero to rescue him. He was very happy where he was. But Booba is confused. Wasn't Mr. Beak in danger? Mr. Beak takes off his headphones and puts them on Booba. Booba realizes that Mr. Beak wasn't in danger. He was listening to music and doing some exercises. Mr. Beak flies back to the island. Oh dear, Booba is sad. Being a superhero isn't as exciting as he thought it would be. But just as he's about to give up, 
He spots Lula lying down in the playground. She's holding some very heavy weights and it looks like she's struggling to keep them up. Booba thinks she needs his help and rushes to save her. But as soon as Lula lets go of the weights, Booba decides to throw them away. They're obviously very dangerous things to have around. Booba soars up into the sky and tries to get rid of it. But it's very heavy and immediately falls to the ground. Lula barely has time to jump out of the way and covers her ears as it crashes to the ground next to her. <coughs> Lula stares at Booba. She's not happy. Being a superhero isn't as much fun as he thought it would be. Booba takes off his costume and walks away. Maybe reading the superhero book will cheer him up. He wanted to be a superhero so much, but he doesn't think he's very good at it. Suddenly, Mr. Beak, Spike and Lula appear above him in a hot air balloon. They ask Booba to come and join them, but he doesn't want to. He's feeling sad and wants to be alone. His friends shrug and take off without him. They're all having a lot of fun when Spike notices a butterfly sitting on the edge of the basket. Spike watches it as it flutters up into the balloon. Spike is curious and wants to watch it, so he scurries up into the basket to take a closer look. But, uh-oh, hedgehogs are spiky and he's popped the balloon. Oh dear, the balloon begins to go down. Now the friends are in trouble and they really need some help. Who will help them? Booba hears them and immediately leaps up. Do his friends really need help or are they just playing with him? Booba remembers how Spike, Mr. Beak and Lula looked at him when he tried to help them. He doesn't want to do the wrong thing again, but they're all still shouting for help. Maybe they do need a superhero after all. But Booba doesn't have his superhero powers anymore. But his friends are in trouble and they need him. He must try and help them somehow, he thinks. Booba grabs a long ladder and chases after the hot air balloon. He climbs the ladder, but it isn't long enough and he can't grab onto the basket. The balloon gets carried away towards the forest and suddenly becomes stuck in the branches of a tall tree. Pretending to be his favourite superhero, Booba runs up and stands under the basket, trying to keep it steady so that his friends can jump out of the basket. Lula, Spike and Mr. Beak jump out of it onto the lawn. They're safe now. Hooray! The friends cheer Booba, their hero! <laughs> Booba is so happy that he finally helped his friends. He lets go of the basket and strikes a heroic superhero pose. But the basket doesn't fall to the ground. The deflated balloon is caught on a branch, balancing the basket all by itself. Booba wasn't needed after all. But Mr. Beak, Spike and Lula don't think that at all. They needed their friend and he came to the rescue. They lift him up into the air. For them, he is a real superhero because he was there when they needed him. Booba and the Desert Island It's a hot summer's day and Booba is playing at the beach. He has found a beautiful shell and looks at it curiously. At first, Booba thinks it's a musical instrument and blows into it as hard as he can. But the shell lets out lots of soap bubbles. Booba is excited by this because he loves popping soap bubbles. <laughs> but soon, Booba gets bored and looks around for something else to do. A green glass bottle hidden in the sand attracts his attention. Booba can see a piece of paper rolled up inside the bottle. His eyes light up. He opens the bottle <laughs> and pulls out the piece of paper. It shows a picture of a tiny desert island. 
Booba takes a closer look and is surprised to see Lula on it. Is she by herself on the island? Worried, Booba rushes to find some binoculars. He looks through the binoculars out to sea, searching for the desert island. Where could it be? Suddenly, he spots Lula. She waves and seems to be calling for help. Booba knows he must do something. He can't leave Lula out there all alone. She's his friend. Booba rushes to find a boat and spots one at the pier. He's never ridden in a boat alone before and doesn't know if he'll be able to control it. But nothing will stop him from helping his friend. He unties the boat and bravely jumps aboard. The wind blows into the sail and whoop! Booba is on his way to the desert island. <laughs> Lula is excited to see Booba. He must have found the bottle and has come to rescue her. The sailboat lands on the shore and Booba jumps off onto the sand. What a beautiful island, thinks Booba. He looks around at all the palm trees with bright yellow bananas hanging from them. Lula can't wait to go home, but Booba has other ideas. What's the hurry? The island looks very inviting and he wants to stay for a while. And he's hungry for lunch. Booba uses the sail from the boat to make a hammock. Just time for lunch and a little nap, thinks Booba. And then they'll be on their way. Booba and Lula sit together in the hammock, make themselves comfortable and eat some bananas. Suddenly, they hear a noise and look to see that the boat is being washed out to sea. They quickly jump out of the hammock, but it's too late. The boat has already sailed away. Lula looks sad. Oh, she wanted to go home. But Booba doesn't seem to mind. He likes the island and the bananas. Lula thinks. She notices the bottle that Booba brought to the island and thinks she'll just have to send out another message. She draws a picture of herself and Booba on the island, places it back into the bottle and then throws it back out to sea. <laughs> now, they just have to wait. Time for more bananas and more bananas and even more bananas. Suddenly, they hear a noise and look closer to see that Spike has arrived on his boat. <laughs> Spike jumps out and looks around at the beautiful island. He likes it here too. But Lula and Booba really do want to go home. But just like Booba, Spike is excited by the many bunches of bananas hanging from the palm trees. Bright, yellow, delicious smelling bananas. They're very tempting. Spike says he must have time for bananas. Lula and Booba realize they're going nowhere unless Spike eats the bananas and decide to play together while Spike enjoys the fruit. Booba plays on Spike's boat and throws a rope to Lula. They go water skiing. This is so much fun, think Booba and Lula. Woohoo! But soon, Lula falls off and doesn't want to play the game anymore. She's tired and really wants to go home. She wonders if Spike is ready to leave yet. Booba, noticing that Lula is no longer hanging onto the boat, gets distracted and doesn't look where he is going. The boat shoots out of the water and ends on top of a palm tree. Uh-oh, how will they get the boat down? It looks like all three of them are going to be stuck on the island now. How will they get home? Lula takes the bottle again and draws another message. A picture of all three of them stuck on the island. She places it back into the bottle and throws it into the sea. Surely somebody will find the message soon. Eventually, a little red aeroplane arrives, rushing to help them. Noodle is flying the plane and lands on the island to rescue them. Everyone is excited until Noodle spots all the palm trees with delicious bananas hanging from them. Booba realizes that they need to think of a plan or else they'll never get off the island. Everyone is too distracted by the delicious bananas. Booba takes some large banana bunches and ties them together to make a raft. Now the friends can leave the island and take the bananas with them. Noodle jumps into the airplane cockpit and throws down a rope. 
The friends tie the banana raft to it. As Noodle's airplane takes off, the raft starts merrily jumping on the waves. This is exciting, think the friends. It's just like being on a fairground ride. It's Noodle flies around the island several times to excite his friends. They're having a great time. But he gets carried away and crashes into a banana tree. Noodle quickly escapes the plane. But this leaves them with a big problem. Now they're all stuck on the island. Once again, Lula draws a picture of all of them stuck on the island and places it in the bottle. She throws it out to sea, hoping that somebody might find it soon. And they don't have to wait for very long. Mr. Beak soon arrives in an inflatable boat, but he's very tired. He's had to paddle all the way to the island to save his friends. He gets out the boat and spots the hammock between the palm trees. Mm, just what he needs for a little sleep. Booba, Lula, Noodle and Spike decide to let him rest. After all, he's come to rescue them. They decide to play baseball for a while with a coconut that Booba finds on the sand. He uses one of the boat paddles to mark out the bases. This is going to be such a fun game. Lula is good at baseball and is excited to start. Booba is thrilled. He grips the oar tighter. He gets ready to hit the coconut thrown by Lula. <coughs> Woohoo! Booba hits the coconut. But the coconut is too strong for the paddle and it breaks. They have to make another one. Lula throws another coconut. Booba hits it with another paddle from Mr. Beak's boat. The second paddle breaks just like the first one. <coughs> Booba is getting annoyed now. There's only one paddle left. If he breaks it too, they won't be able to sail off the island to go home. But Booba really wants to play. He grabs the paddle tighter and stands opposite Lula. She gets ready to throw the coconut. She throws it. Booba swings. Spike gets ready to catch. But Booba doesn't hit the coconut. He accidentally swings too hard and hits Spike instead of sending him flying into the dinghy. Uh-oh. Hedgehogs are spiky, and Spike accidentally bursts the rubber dinghy. The friends shriek, waking Mr. Beak on the hammock. He immediately jumps up in shock. What are they going to do now? But Lula knows what to do. She draws another picture of all of them, puts it in the bottle, and sends it out to sea again. The friends all get into the hammock. The palm trees bend under their weight, and they hear a creak. But they decide to ignore it. Suddenly, Genie Booba arrives on a surfboard. He goes ashore and looks at Booba and the others with a mischievous grin. He snaps his fingers. <laughs> Mr. Beak is surprised to see a brand new paddle in his wings. Finally, they can leave the island. But unexpectedly, the palm trees ping up and Booba and his friends are thrown up into the air. <laughs> thrown all the way back home. Hooray! They are rescued. Meanwhile, Genie Booba is in no hurry to leave the island. He's excited to see the bananas too. And he can have them all to himself as a reward for saving his friends. Genie Booba climbs into the hammock, peels a banana and gets ready to relax. But what's this? A cruise ship? With hundreds of Taurus teddy bears, rush over to the genie. Each of them is eager to hug Genie Booba and take a picture with him. This isn't the peace and quiet that Genie Booba was looking for. Oh dear. Booba and the Phantom Footballer. It's time for a game of football. Noodle is the referee and blows the whistle. Spike is the goalkeeper and stands waiting for the ball to be kicked his way. Booba is excited to try. He kicks the ball and rushes to the goal. He wants to score. Booba has got amazing football skills and passes to his teammates Lula and Mr. Beak before they pass it back to him and... Hey! <laughs> 
go! Booba scores. Or he thinks he does. Something seems to be stopping the ball from going into the goal. Mr. Beak grabs the ball and throws it back onto the pitch, ready for them all to continue with the game. Booba and Mr. Beak tackle each other. <laughs> But soon they lose the ball to Lula. Lula is good at football too. Mr. Beak and Booba run to try and stop him from scoring, but it's too late. <laughs> Even Mr. Beak's wings can't stop Lula from scoring. <laughs> She cheers, but Mr. Beak isn't happy. The ball got past him. Meanwhile, Spike is enjoying playing with the ball himself. He wants to score a goal too, but the ball is too big for Spike. He gets in a muddle. <laughs> And his teammates mistake him for a ball. Uh oh! Suddenly, everyone hears a whistle, and Noodle appears. He's trying to tell the team something. The ball is out of control. Everyone stares at the ball when it suddenly flies into the air, knocking Boobar over. <laughs> Boobar's fall shakes the apple tree, and all the apples fall onto the ground, covering Boobar. <laughs> But. What's this? A pair of glasses have appeared above Booba's head. He takes them and puts them on. He looks towards his friends and notices that somebody else appears to be in the team too. Is that Ghost Booba? These aren't normal glasses. They're magic glasses. Booba removes his glasses and Ghost Booba disappears. He puts them back on again. And Ghost Booba reappears, then disappears, then reappears. Ghost Booba is trying to get the team's attention, but they're too busy arguing with each other. Only Booba can see Ghost Booba. Lula walks away. She's had enough of playing football, but Ghost Booba wants her to stay, so runs after her. But she doesn't notice him. Ghost Booba is invisible. Ghost Booba is sad. In his frustration, he kicks the ball away. <laughs> But he doesn't notice Noodle in the way, and the ball sends Noodle flying up into the air. Uh oh! Thinks Ghost Booba and runs into the house. Booba follows him in. Inside the house, Lula is grumpily rolling some dough in the kitchen. Ghost Booba wants to help her. But Booba is on to him. He can see that Ghost Booba is in a mischievous mood. Ghost Booba has a fork in his hand, and Booba immediately takes it away from him. But the tussle causes Lula to land face down in her pastry. <laughs> She looks at Booba, thinking it's his fault, but he waves his hands to say it wasn't him. He immediately moves away from the counter. Not wanting to get into any more trouble from Lula, Ghost Booba laughs at Booba. <laughs> He thinks it's funny. He wants to get up to even more mischief. He takes some eggs from the kitchen counter and juggles with them. Uh oh! Thinks Booba. He needs to stop him, but it's too late. Ghost Booba kicks one of the eggs, and it cracks right on top of Lula's head. Uh oh! Lula removes the egg from her face and demands Booba give her the eggs in his hand. She returns to the kitchen counter as Ghost Booba laughs at him. He throws an egg at Booba, and he ends up with egg on his face too. Ghost Booba and Lula look at Booba and laugh. He looks funny. Booba doesn't think this is funny. Before Ghost Booba can get into trouble with Booba, he runs out of the kitchen. Outside, Mr. Beak is trying to catch a butterfly. Hmm, thinks Ghost Booba. I wonder what mischief I can get up to out here. He takes the butterfly net from Mr. Beak, <laughs> just as Booba appears. Mr. Beak turns around to see who has taken his net. When he sees Booba holding it, Booba immediately gives it back to Mr. Beak. <laughs> But Ghost Booba is up to no good again. He takes the net and plonks Mr. Beak on the head with it. Mr. Beak can't see anything. 
and runs around in circles, squawking. He doesn't see the seesaw in his way and is flung up into the air before landing on the ground on his bottom. <coughs> he is really not happy with Booba. Booba tries to tell him that it's not him. But Mr. Beak turns the leave when Ghost Booba squeezes a horn very loudly, <coughs> causing Mr. Beak to jump in fright. Ghost Booba thinks this is very funny and quickly puts the horn in Booba's hand as Mr. Beak turns around. Ghost Booba disappears. Mr. Beak takes the horn, squeezes it at Booba before giving it to him and leaving. <coughs> Ghost Booba wants to be even more mischievous and finds Spike at the sandpit building a sandcastle. He has a bucket of apples and is just about to tip them in the sand when Booba appears. Booba knows what he's about to do and tries to stop him. <laughs> he grabs the apple bucket, but Ghost Booba refuses to let go. They fight over the bucket, but Ghost Booba can float in the air <laughs> and pulls the bucket up into the sky with Booba still hanging onto it. Ghost Booba throws the apple down at Spike and they land on his spikes and destroy his sandcastle. Soon the bucket is empty and Booba comes crashing down to the ground with the bucket landing on his head. Spike turns to look at him. He thinks it's Booba who has ruined his sandcastle. He is not happy and throws an apple at the bucket which is still on Booba's head. No. He disappears. Ghost Booba reappears giggling. He throws an apple at the bucket too. Poor Booba. But Booba has had enough and puts the bucket over Ghost Booba's head. Now he can't see where he's going. He floats up into the air but bangs into the apple tree, knocking the apples to the floor before landing on a swing. <coughs> Ghost Booba looks sad. <laughs> Booba looks at him and wonders why he's sad. How can he cheer him up? Booba has an idea. Maybe Ghost Booba would like to play football. He grabs the ball and kicks it towards Ghost Booba. <laughs> Suddenly, Ghost Booba looks happy again. They kick the ball to each other and have fun. But Mr. Beak, Lula and Spike can't see Ghost Booba because they don't have the magic glasses. Who is Booba playing football with? They are very confused. Suddenly, Booba spots that he is being watched and realizes that this game must look very funny to his friends. He has an idea. He disappears and returns with a fire extinguisher. He sets it off and Ghost Booba appears. Now everybody can see Ghost Booba. They're all happy to see each other until they hear a whistle. It's Noodle, blowing his whistle and clinging onto the ball. He sees the team around him and has an idea. Time for another game of football. Everyone plays a great game of football together and Ghost Booba scores the winning goal. They celebrate by holding him high in the air. Yay for Ghost Booba! Booba and the Missing Cheese One day, Booba falls asleep in his favourite yellow armchair. It is big and cosy with a soft turquoise pillow. Booba sleeps blissfully. Suddenly, he turns to the side and rolls on the floor head over heels. <laughs> Sleepy Booba looks around. Suddenly, his eyes wide open. There is a telescope next to the armchair. Booba runs up to it and begins to look around, eager to look at everything around him. Booba points the telescope at the closed fridge and sees a large piece of cheese hidden in there right through the door. <gasps> Booba rubs his eyes. He can't believe his luck. Booba runs to the fridge, opens the door and sees the cheese inside. It lies on a tray covered with a transparent lid. Who knew the telescope was a magic telescope? 
Booba pulls the tray out of the fridge. What luck! He is just hungry. Suddenly, he is distracted by a quiet chirping in his ear. Booba turns around to see a toy Jerome. It hovers next to Booba. Its round viewfinder is pointed directly at him. Booba hurriedly puts the cheese back in the fridge. He hasn't got time for cheese when there is a new toy in the house. Booba tries to attract the attention of the drone to play with it. But it doesn't work. The drone does not react to him in any way. Then Booba looks around and sees Spike with a remote control. The drone obediently performs all Spike's commands. Booba gets upset and sticks his tongue out at the drone. <coughs> he doesn't really want to play with such a meanie. Nearby, Lula draws a vase with sunflowers. The vase stands on a round table directly in front of her. Lula waves her brush at the easel like a real artist. Booba comes over to admire her work. Lula's sunflower painting is almost finished, but the picture is missing one tiny thing. Lula thinks about the finishing touches. Booba decides to help her. He goes to the vase with the sunflowers and turns it slightly so that the light from the windows illuminate the flowers better. <laughs> Lula nods gratefully. However, Booba does not stop there. He begins to turn the table with the vase this way and that way until the vase falls. <laughs> Lula gets upset and asks him to leave. Booba's actions made Lula lose track and the sunflowers in her picture look all wonky. Gloomy Booba wanders off. At the big wall-mounted TV in the living room, Mr. Beak plays a dancing game. A cute teddy bear on the screen moves energetically. Mr. Beak enthusiastically copies every move he makes. Mr. Beak notices Booba's interest and asks him to join in. But Booba finds the dance boring, so he makes up his own dance. Booba gets up on his hands and rolls around the room doing cartwheels. <laughs> Mr. Beak shakes his head. Silly Booba. Meanwhile, Booba rolls up behind the couch when Noodle has built a tower of building blocks. Booba falls into the tower and knocks it over. <laughs> Noodle, wearing a construction helmet, Sadly looks at the mess. Just think of that. So much work and all for nothing. Booba hurriedly rebuilds the tower, but he cannot build anything solid. On the contrary, he only makes it worse. Noodle is very angry with Booba. He jumps out of his seat and starts throwing the cubes at Booba. <coughs> Booba barely manages to escape in time. After catching his breath, he feels exhausted. Booba gets back into his favourite yellow armchair and falls asleep instantly. Booba has slept for a long time. He wakes up to a loud rumbling in his stomach. It is time for something to eat. Booba gets out of his armchair and points the telescope at the fridge again. This time, the fridge door is open and there is only the unfinished crust of cheese left on the tray while the cheese itself is gone. <gasps> Booba panics and runs to the fridge. In front of the fridge, on the floor, he sees a footprint. The foot is long. There are three toes. Mm, something seems familiar. Booba takes out his magnifying glass and carefully examines the footprint. Hmm. Hmm. But he cannot remember whose it might be. Booba decides to solve the mysterious disappearance of cheese at all costs. The footprints on the floor leads him to the easel. Lula stands nearby, puzzled as to where the new painting on the easel comes from. <sighs> 
The picture shows a big, beautiful and very appetizing piece of cheese. Booba looks closely. Well, that's who has eaten the cheese from the fridge. It's Lula. Lula shakes her head. She didn't do anything like that. She too becomes curious about where the cheese has disappeared. Booba and Lula team up to find the cheese thief together. They go back to the fridge. Lula puts her paw on the footprint left by the culprit. Her paw is much smaller. Who could it be? Lula thinks. Suddenly, Lula and Booba notice a green feather with a red tip. It falls on the floor not too far from the fridge. Booba picks it up and tickles Lula. <laughs> They both have a lot of fun. And only then, Booba and Lula realize that the feather is new evidence. It's Mr. Beak, they think simultaneously. That's who ate the cheese. They rush to him. Mr. Beak is extremely surprised to hear such accusations against him. <coughs> Parrots don't like cheese. Mr. Beak might have forgotten the feather by the fridge, but eating cheese? No, that is impossible. Mr. Beak also becomes curious as to who has eaten Booba's favourite food. And he joins his friend's investigation. Booba, Lula and Mr. Beak return to the fridge. They examine everything again. While Booba paces back and forth, Lula and Mr. Beak watch him with interest. Booba looks like a grown-up, a very serious detective. His friends wait to hear what he has to say. Finally, Booba stops. He has noticed colourful cubes scattered around the fridge. <gasps> it's Noodle! Booba exclaims. Noodle loves to play with cubes and build some bizarre structures with them. Booba, Lula and Mr. Beak run to the couch where Noodle has created a whole fortress with a castle and an impressive protective wall. Noodle sits at the very top wearing a toy crown. Noodle says he knows nothing about the cheese. He is too small for such a big piece of cheese. Noodle is physically unable to eat it. Booba sighs. Will the identity of the cheese thief remain a mystery? Suddenly, Spike catches his attention. He is the last person Booba needs to speak to. And, after all, Spike's toy drone has been flying all over the place. Booba approaches him. Spike responds the same way everyone else did. <laughs> he didn't take the cheese. Booba is upset. Now it's a dead end for sure. They will not be able to solve this mysterious case. Meanwhile, Lula catches the toy drone and discovers that it has a built-in video camera. It has recorded everything and the crime is also caught on camera. Finding the cheese thief turns out to be very easy. All you have to do is watch the recording. This is exactly what the friends do. They rewind the tape to the moment when Lula placed a blank canvas on the easel and press the play button on the drone. From the video, they learn that when Spike called everyone outside for a walk, Booba stayed in the house because he was asleep. As soon as his friends left, Booba jumped out of his armchair and began to sleepwalk. His eyes were half closed and his arms stretched straight out in front of him. First, he walked over to the new canvas on the easel and drew a piece of cheese on it. Then Booba turned on the wall-mounted TV and started Mr. Beak's game. He danced so much with the teddy bear that it gave him a round of applause at the end. Booba scored the maximum number of points. Then. He went behind the couch into Noodle's domain and completely rebuilt his fortress. It is thanks to Booba that a castle with high towers appeared in Noodle's fortress. Tired, 
Booba went to the fridge, opened the door, took out the tray with the cheese and ate it, leaving only the crust. Satisfied, he returned to his armchair and went to sleep. Lula turns off the video recording. Booba smiles with a guilty look. <laughs> Such a plot twist, even he wasn't expecting. Lula, Mr. Beak, Noodle and Spike give him an angry look. <laughs> Booba thought his friends had taken the cheese, but it turned out to be his own fault. It is very frustrating. Booba is very ashamed of his behaviour. So, how does he apologise to his friends? A wonderful thought occurs to him. <coughs> he runs up to the magic telescope. Booba uses it to explore every corner of the house. He finds strawberries, grapes, apples and bananas. He arranges them on beautiful plates, puts them on a tray and hurries to his friends. He gives strawberries to Lula, grapes to Mr Beak, apples to Spike and bananas to Noodle. Everyone laughs and tucks in the fruit. <laughs> Detective Booba has saved the day.